it was great to see them avenge their loss to the U.S. in the earlier stages of the game, winning that in the finals, and the Iroquois Nation finishing third. So another uh, spectacular performance from a, a largely Canadian group of players. So it's uh, very, very special to watch. And you've actually brought something along that has some, some First Nations heritage with it. Can you take us through this? I have. I have. With pleasure. So what I have in front of me right here is, uh, for those of you not familiar with uh, Native First, First Nations culture, is that when there's a, a moment of symbolicness, they uh, m put it, they don't write it down so much as they make a wampum. They make a wampum belt to commemorate it. And what I have here in front of me, the, you can see right here are two wampums. There's the Six Nations flag that you're used to seeing, and right here is what they call the two-row wampum. And the two-row wampum is a very big part of Native American life. As uh, what you can see are the two purple lines, and this is a treaty that was handed to the very first European settlers that came to the shores of North America. These two purple lines, one represents the Haagen-Dazsani canoe, and the other one represents a European ship. And the white represents the river of life. The white is also meant to symbolize purity, friendship, respect, and, uh, and non-dominance of one another. And what it is is that these two ships travel down the river of life together, never impeding with one another's laws, customs, and allowing the other ship to live its own life, to walk its own path. And uh, basically, that's, uh, that's the treaty that they gave to the first North, uh, settlers that came to the North American shores. But it's also a way of life for the Native American people that it doesn't just represent a treaty between the two nations, but it also represents the way two people would interact with each other or the way that you should interact with nature. And then on, on the uh, side here, what you have is the Hawathi Belt. And the Hawathi Belt, this is a representation of the five nations that make up, well, there are six nations now, but it's the five nations that make up the flag that most of you would know from Six Nations. And what you have here is the Seneca represent the square. They are the keepers of the Western Door. Then you have the Cayuga, who are the people of the swamp. Then you have the Onondaga, who are represented by the tree or the heart of the wampum. Then you have the Onadia, who are the uh, people of the Standing Stone. And you have the Mohawk, who are the keepers of the Western Gate. Oh, Tim, if I'm not counting that right, that's five. You say there's six? There are six. Uh, the Tuscany, Tuscany tribe joined, uh, and let me make sure I got uh, the Tuscarora tribe joined uh, later on in the 1700s. But, you know, as this wampum right here certainly goes to show a relationship of non-dominance and neutrality between two parties, so too does the uh, wampum of their flag, as it has the line that travels through it. And the line that travels through it doesn't intersect any of the squares, which represent a fort that are open in the middle to represent an open heart and open mind. But the path, it's considered the path of peace, and it extends out past the two gates, the Mohawk Gate and the Seneca Gate, and it's there for anybody and everybody, any nation that wants to travel the path of peace and take refuge underneath the great tree of peace. Wow, that's some really cool history, and based on some, some very simple diplomatic principles. It is. It's uh, simple and so sophisticated. It's um, and you know, it's uh, one of those things that the Native American people, if you've ever gotten a chance to, as I have, I've uh, never played for Six Nations, but I got a chance to try out. It's unbelievable how hospitable they are, how welcoming they are. A big part of playing with the Six Nations Chiefs was that they always have meals. They have a meal before every game and after every game, and it's a big part of bonding together. It's a beautiful thing. Does that go for media people too, or? That's, uh, I'll try to get us in there, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so if you're a lacrosse player and you want something like this, this two wampum, uh, where, where would you go and get that? Well, this, this right here is a mark mesh, and uh, it's only sold through the ILA Sports and Aquasosony Sports, which are, we only, uh, uh, blue, uh, mark mesh, blue collar lacrosse, only puts the two row wampum, sells it through stores uh, that are 100% owned and operated by Native American people. So standing up with the, the tradition of uh, that comes along with this. It certainly does. And also on top of that, there's a portion of the money that goes to help out the Dreamcatcher Foundation, which puts the hand in sticks of Native American people that don't have the opportunity to play lacrosse and hence spread the healing and the love of the game of lacrosse to the First Nations, the people that gave it to us.